How's everybody doing? So, in the last video, we wrote this big old thing here about the damage attribute, and I kind of just wrote it because it was necessary to get to the next thing, right? Uh, this is going to be a little video on explaining a bit deeper what's going on here. Let's go. Okay, so we've got this post gameplay effect execute function. It's receiving data and come down here and this is what we wrote last time, right? If the data and it's evaluated data and the attribute on it is the damage attribute, then we go through this whole thing here where we grab the source. So the source is here. We're grabbing the original instigator ability component, ability system component off the context. And the context comes from the data, the effect spec get context. So we can get the instigator's ability system component and set that as source, right? So we come down here. So once we're checking if the source, the ability actor info, and the actor, the avatar actor, all of that is valid, we're going to grab those actors and controllers off of it. So now we're taking our null pointers, our initialized null pointers here, our source actor and our source controller, and we're going to get the avatar actor and the player controller off of our source from that actor info, and we're going to fill those. So this is the source of where this ability is coming from. And we're going to check to make sure if we didn't get a source controller off of this ability actor info, for some reason it's not set, we're going to grab it instead by casting our source actor into a pawn because it should cast to a pawn if it's got this, um, if it is an avatar actor. And then we're going to get the controller off that pawn. And we're going to use that controller to get the source pawn. So we're going to cast the pawn get pawn off the source controller and we're going to cast that to our custom character and now we have a character set a source character otherwise we're going to do it off of our source actor directly if if this didn't work we got to get that source character because it gets passed down here now we need to extract a hit result so we're taking our context once again and remember our context up here it comes from the data, the data, interchange that a lot. The data comes in and we're grabbing the effect spec, I don't want to move that, uh, and we're getting the context. So we have this context handle set up, and down here we're getting the hit result off of that context. Now we're going to set a local damage done off of the damage that has come in. So our attribute has filled up with damage, we're storing it locally, and then we're clearing our damage attribute so that it can bring in some new damage. If the damage is greater than zero, if we have actually received some damage, then we're going into this. We're grabbing our health, our current health, and setting it up as our old health. Then we're gonna set our current health, and we're gonna clamp it from the old health, this local damage, so we're subtracting the local damage from our current health, right, get health, and then we're clamping it between zero and our maximum health. And then we're setting the health, setting our current health to that value. So now we have been hurt. If we have a target character and it's not a null pointer, which our target character was set up here, we grab the target character by casting our target actor, which came off of our data once again, our target and the ability actor info, and we got the actor the avatar actor and we cast it so there's our target character so if we have that target character set and it's not a null pointer we're coming into here so here's where we handle damage we're taking that local damage done which we uh, got from up here from our damage attribute we're taking the hit result the source tags and here's the source character who caused it and the source actor again so this is the instigator and the instigators character and we're calling handle damage. And then we're also calling handle health changed. So we're sending out the negative value of the damage done and the source tags. So handle damage and handle health changed call events that are implemented in blueprints. So it comes over here to our character base, which implements this. So we've got handle damage 
and handle health changed right here. And they call this on damaged and on health changed, which passes this information and this information. And we can see it here now in our blueprints. Here's the values and here's the values. We're not using it. We could use it and we could break it. And there's where our hit result, all of our hit result comes in. So we could use those values if we wanted to. So that's what the damage is doing. That's that's what that all of that is doing. But I kind of want to go a little bit deeper. Where is that damage coming from? So let's check out the damage base in the action RPG because we haven't done this. Check this out. We have this backing data here and then we have a drop down. We have three options, defense power, attack power and damage. Where is that coming from? We're adding an a scalable float and our attack damage. Okay, so we're capturing an attribute here, capturing the damage attribute. Well, if we look here, our calculation class, they have a custom calculation class of RPG damage execution. Here's the damage execution. This is a gameplay effect execution calculation. This allows us to combine raw damage numbers with attack power and defense power. So this is where we can create uh, damage that isn't just a flat value. We can actually modify it if we have a strength modifier, if we have a more powerful weapon or we apply modifications. So not just a scalable single flat value. So we've got this execute implementation, which is overriding the execute from this guy. So when, when we actually execute an ability, we come over here and we do all of this. Now, what we saw, that little drop down, comes from these macros. And these macros are set up so we can actually declare a captured attribute. So these are written for the action RPG. They're capturing defense power, attack power, and damage. This is a struct, these damage statics. So here we're defining defense power and the target, and it's false, we're not snapshotting it. So if we take a look over here, defense power, the captured source is target, and we are not snapshotting it. So this is not snapshotting, right? So it's using the health value at the moment we apply the execution. The attack power one is snapshotting. So this, when it hits the, uh, hits the target, so if we're shooting like a fireball, we want to use the attack power the moment the projectile's launched, not when it's hit. So the snapshot is grabbing the attack po power in the moment so that we know what the attack power is. Let's say the attack power gets modified between throwing the fireball and the fireball hitting the target. We do not want to use the new attack power. We want to use the current, the immediate one when we fired our fireball. And this is the damage one, right? So this is the one that we're using for all of our damage stuff, right? We're grabbing from a weapon hit, we're damaging. If we are causing the fireball's attack, the actual damage, the moment it hits, we're doing the damage. So here's the constructor here, and we're utilizing the struct up here. So relevant attributes to capture, that's from the parent class, and we're adding from our struct the captured defense power def uh, def, which is here captured def, attack power, and damage. So these are all being added to our relevant attributes to capture. So when we construct over here, calculation class, that's what creates the backing data right here. So this is from the constructor, our structs. Now let's take a look at execute. So this is the implementation of the parent execute. We're receiving some execution parameters. So these are custom execution parameters. These coming in, we're able to get our target and our source ability system components. So this stuff is not being used. Um, you can see that it's grayed out. This is probably taken from an example thing when they were writing the action RPG. So that's not used. So we've got this spec here that we're grabbing off the execution params and we're using that to grab source tags and target tags off of what we just captured. And we can take a look here. Uh, we've got source tags and target tags on the execution, right? Uh, I haven't found anything in the action RPG that actually uses this, but you can see require tags, ignore tags. So I'm guessing this, um, these tags can modify the ability and the effect so that uh, a target requires a specific 
what do you, whatever you want to call it, it requires tags in order for the effect to happen on the source. And the target requires tags in order for it to happen. Ignore tags. If, an, if, if we have an ignore tag, this effect doesn't take place. All right, so now we come down to the actual meat of this damage execution. Damage done is damage times attack power divided by defense power. That's, that's how this uh, game, the action RPG, is calculating, um, calculating it. If defense power is zero, it's treated as one, so we're not dividing by zero. So we are setting up our floats, defense power, attack power, and our damage. We are going to attempt calculate captured attribute magnitude on all of them. So here's our, our struct again, our damage statics right here. And we're grabbing off of that the captured defense power or the captured attack power or the damage, setting the defense power to one here if it's zero. And our evaluation params, and then we're sending in, this is by reference, the float. So the defense power, the attack power, and the damage are filled up by the captured attribute magnitude. And remember, the modifier magnitude right here is what we're capturing. So, for example, this is the player hammer burst pound. Uh, we have a scalable float magnitude here. And you can see here, they're using a, a curve table, attack damage hammer. Here's the curve table for the attack damage hammer. We've got default attacks, heavy, medium attacks, and heavy attacks. They look like they're set... Um, the same through, I guess, what is this, level 10, level 1 through 10. And so we can actually preview at zero. I guess this would be the preview level. Um, and we've got default attack, medium attack, and heavy attack off of that attack, that curve table. from, And that's where this attempt calculate captured attribute magnitude is coming in from. Okay, so now this is the actual equation. Our damage done is the damage times attack power divided by our defense power. And we're sending out, finally, an out execution output. The modifier damage statics dot damage property. Additive damage done. So finally, this damage property, additive damage done, is being added to this m output modifier. And if we go to the parent class, Here's the header, we have output modifiers. So that is add uh, output modifier. We're adding it to this array of modifier evaluated data. So on internal execute mod, we get our information, which is eventually calling our post gameplay effect execute. That comes back over here, it sends the data in, and that data is where we get the damage attribute, which was all set up back here on the actual execute, right? There is a ton going on, and it's kind of crazy. I don't fully understand all of it. I just keep hitting find usages and <laughs> try and make my way through all of this, um, this craziness. Hopefully you found some of that interesting. Uh, I think really what you can get out of it is this damage execution, which is interesting, where you can capture attributes here and then eventually um, write your own execute implementation in your custom damage execution so that you can actually do something like this where damage done is damage times attack power divided by defense power so that you can capture those values and make way cooler attacks that actually multiply and add up to something cool so there's that i'll try and think of something else to uh, work on with the gameplay ability system uh, until then I'll see you guys later. I have just a few more days before I start school, so until next time, keep it real.